85 a doozy. Settling. This truth came born with beer and Paul. I felt it when I sorrowed most. It is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. O oh, true in word and tried in deed, demanding, so to bring relief to this which is our common grief, what kind of life is that I lead? And whether trust in things above be dimmed of sorrow or sustained, and whether love for him have drained my capabilities of love. Your words have virtue such as draws a faithful answer from the breast, through light reproaches half expressed and loyal and kindly laws. My blood and even tenor kept, till on mine ear this message falls, in Vienna's fatal walls God's finger touched him, <laughs> and he slept. The great intelligence is fair that range above our mortal state, and circle round the blessed gate, received and gave him a welcome there. And led him through the, the blissful climes, and showed him in the fountain fresh all knowledge that the sons of flesh shall gather in cycled times. But I remained, whose hopes were dim, whose life, whose thoughts were little worth, to wander on a darkened earth where all things round me breathed of him. O oh, friendship, equal poised control, O oh, heart, by the kindliest motion warm, O oh, sacred essence, other form, O oh, solemn ghost, O oh, crowned soul, yet none could better know than I how much an act at human hands the sense of human will demands by which we dare to live or die. Whatever way my days decline, I felt and feel, though left alone, his being working in mine own, the footsteps of his life in mine. A life that all the muses decked with gifts of grace, that might express all comprehensive tenderness, all subtilizing intellect. And so my passion hath not swerved to works, of weakness, but I find an image comforting the mind, and in my grief a strength reserved. Likewise, the imaginative woe that loved to handle spiritual strife diffused the shock through all my life, but in the present broke the blow. My pulses, therefore, beat again for other friends that once I met. Nor can it suit me to forget the mighty hopes that make us men. I rule your love, and count it crime to mourn for any overmuch. I, the divided half of such a friendship as had mastered time. Which masters time indeed, and is eternal, separate from fears. The all-assuming months and years can take no part away from this. But summer on the steaming floods, and spring that swells the narrow brooks, and autumn with a noise of rooks that gather in the waning woods, and every pulse of wind and wave recalls, and change of lighter gloom, my old affection at the tomb, and my prime passion in the grave. My old affection of the tomb, a part of stillness, yearns to speak, arise, and get thee forth and seek a friendship for the years to come. I watch thee from the quiet shore, my spirit up to mine can reach, but in dear words of human speech we two communicate no more. And I can clouds of nature stain the starry clearness of the free. How is it? Canst thou feel for me some painless sympathy with pain? 
and lightly does the whisper fall. Tis hard for thee to fathom this. I triumph in conclusive bliss, and that serene result of all. So hold thy commerce with the dead, for so methinks the dead would say. For so shall grief with symbols play in pining life be fancy fed. Now looking to some settled end that these things pass, and I shall prove a meeting somewhere. Love with love, I crave your pardon, O oh my friend. If not so fresh, if love is true, I clasping brother hands, fair I could not. If I would transfer the whole I felt for him to you. For which be they that hold apart the promise of the golden hours? First love, first friendship, equal powers that marry with the virgin heart. Still mine cannot but deplore that beats within a lonely place, but yet remembers his embrace, but at his footsteps sleeps no more. My heart, though widowed, may not rest quite in the love of what is gone. It seeks to beat in time with one that warms another living breast. Ah, take the imperfect gift I bring, knowing the primrose yet is dear, the primrose of the later year, as not unlike to that of spring. Quite good. <laughs> Sometimes you run across that in the poetry and in life. <laughs>